hot air balloon over the Alps, never to be seen again. A man of God and such enthusiasm. Of course they ended up eating him. Caught it in a Turkish bordello. Of course he's quite insane now. Shots of absent, then tried to swim the channel. Hypnotized into believing he was a steam locomotive, and very rubber. All that was left was his top hat and his silk scarf. The rest was just dust. Welcome to this week's edition of How Many Hats? On our panel this week, Prince of the Pop World, Ricky Stone. Hello. <laughs> Writer and broadcaster and magistrate, Lady Margaret Bolting. Good evening. The inimitable Sir Geoffrey Whiting. No. <laughs> and making his How Many Hats debut, humorist and scriptwriter, Benjamin Graham. Hello there. <laughs> Without any further ado, please welcome our first How Many Hats contestant. You are Mrs. Alfred Daly of St. Albans? Yes, I am. Panel, she's all yours. How many hats is Mrs. Daly wearing? Ricky, you begin. Is the number of hats you're wearing uh, an odd number? <laughs> Good stuff. <laughs> Lady Margaret? Is the number of hats you're wearing a two-digit number? No, it isn't. Oh. Sorry, Lady Margaret, that's one to us. Sir Geoffrey? Is the number of hats you're wearing, perchance, a prime number? Benjamin, your hat witness. <laughs> isn't he, um... I mean, isn't it obvious? I mean... <laughs> right, um, is the number of hats you're wearing three hats? <laughs> it's back with you, Ricky. <laughs> um... If I multiply the number of hats you're wearing by seven, would She's I... She's wearing three hats. <laughs> well, it's obvious. We can all see it. She's got three hats on. You've got three hats on, haven't you? Well, it looks like Ben has rumbled you, <laughs> Mrs. Daly. Are you wearing three hats? Yes, I am. Good start, panel. That's one to you. Thank you very much, Mrs. Alfred Daly of St. Albans. Our regards to your husband. Let's see if our next contestant can fox you. Please welcome Mr. Cyril Jacobs. One hat. No! There's only one hat! I will not be silent! <laughs> one hat! Well, we appear to be having some temporary problems with tonight's transmission of How Many Hats. Until we can return you to the programme, here's a picture of Princess Margaret. <laughs> you rang, Mr. Stuffer? Ah, the very fellow. Once again, I find myself in need of your assistance, Veal. I fear I've got into a frightful chutney with a girl called Mary Gardner. She's a scullery maid of Lord Dartmouth's, is she not, sir? Quite so, Bill. Then I believe I can guess the nature of your difficulty. Good heavens, can you? Your Aunt Hilda instructed you to poach Miss Gardner for her own household staff, and in the process you've incurred the wrath of Lady Dartmouth 
and thus jeopardised the impending nuptials of Lord and Lady Dartmouth's daughter to your cousin Horace. No, I shagged her senseless in the pantry a few weeks ago. <laughs> now the stupid bitch is pregnant. And what's worse, the scaggy whore refuses to have an abortion. The bad cheek of it, Bill. Right. Well, I feel a proper potato neck. I don't mind telling you. So have her killed. There's a good chap. Perhaps if Sir were to disguise himself as an Abyssinian. No, just have her killed. Certainly, sir. Oh, and while you're out, a spot of heroin wouldn't go amiss. Very good, sir. Who the devil's pancakes is that, Bill? Your Aunt Hilda, Mr. Stafford. Aunt Hilda? Blasted Bill! Why must I be continually plagued by these aged bitches? No doubt she's come round here to kowtow me into attending my mother's funeral or some such poppycock. Get rid of her, would you, Bill? I'll tell her you're indisposed, shall I, sir? Well, I was going to suggest you knock her out with chloroform, weight her down with bricks, and then pop her into the canal. But I suppose that might work. Very good, sir. Lady Cartwright, I'm afraid your nephew is currently unable to... Veal, that it was necessary for me to strike you just then. I thought you might be about to knock me out with chloroform. A most sensible precaution, Lady Cartwright. Stay where you are, Veal, or I'll cut you. <laughs> now listen to me, Charlie, you ham skulled dunder buttocks. My goddaughter Eustacia wishes to. <laughs> now then, Veal, if it's not too much trouble, I'd like you please to escort my aunt up to the Grand Union. Oh, and on your way back, pick up two girls who do everything. Certainly, <laughs> sir. Peter is standing on a stool and using his mother's chip pan. Stop! This is dangerous. Stools can be fragile. <laughs> Children should always stand on a solid chair when using a chip pan. <laughs> Remember, chip pan Children, chair. <laughs> Mum's off to the shops with baby. To make things easier, she's leaving him outside, alone. <laughs> but wait, is he safe? <laughs> Remember, mothers, don't leave a pram unattended in a public place without applying the brake. <laughs> For baby's sake, apply the brake. Hot meals are important for vitality, but eating large amounts can lead to corpulence. And being corpulent can make some everyday tasks difficult, even dangerous. But heart attacks are preventable. Stop! Yes, if you're a little on the larger side, best avoid exercise. Because fatness and fitness don't mix.